Bringing virtual guest speakers into a live stream is a massive pain in the butt, especially if you see me do it with Zoom because you have to hope your guest speaker is Zoom fluent. Yep, I just made that word up and you need to dummy proof the setup. In today's video that you're definitely going to hit the like and subscribe button for, I'm going to show you how to bring a FaceTime guest caller into a live stream using an A10 Mini Extreme. We're also gonna have a Camlink 4K capture card and a Mac with FaceTime capabilities. This one has been on my to-do list for quite some time. We've seen tons of methods for bringing in guest callers to a live stream, and today I wanted to find a method that could foolproof it in a sense with perhaps some of our older generation audience members. The tools that you'll need are one, an A10 Mini, in this case I use the Extreme, Two, a Camlink 4K capture or similar USB capture card that is compatible with FaceTime. And then three, a Mac so that you can call someone on FaceTime. Sorry, Windows and Android users, but this particular method will not work for your case. I'll be sure to link to everything that I use in the description down below. The setup for this is quite simple, but as you may remember from my past videos, it will involve a mix minus audio feed. Let's talk about the inputs and outputs, and then I'll show you how it's done. We start off with the FaceTime caller. All they really need on their end is an iPhone and ideally a tripod to hold their phone. Bonus points if they have AirPods for better sound quality and to prevent any echo from coming back through the call. On the live stream side, we'll use a MacBook Pro, and I'll start by connecting a Camlink 4K. Since my MacBook has all USB-C ports, I'm using Apple's USB-C adapter that I'll link to below in the comments. This adapter allows for one USB-C port on the computer to provide power for the computer, HDMI output from the computer, and USB Type-A input. We'll plug our power cable in, then an HDMI output cable, and finally a Camlink 4K capture device. In some setups, depending on how wide your cam link and your HDMI cable is, you may want to use the included USB extender that came with the cam link since they won't fit side by side with the HDMI cable. Now you are set for being able to output HDMI from your computer to your ATEM and input any HDMI camera feed into your computer. The last thing that you'll need to do is to send an audio feed back to the computer for your FaceTime guests to hear everything happening in the live stream except their own speech. This is called a mix minus, and we've talked about this in the past videos. You can do it a number of ways, whether that means using a USB audio capture device like the Focusrite Scarlett or your audio mixer. In this case, I can use my Zoom Live Track L8. Again, there are many ways to do this. You simply need to be able to send an audio feed into your computer that doesn't include the audio from your FaceTime guest. From here, open up the FaceTime application on your computer, and in the top menu bar, select Video, and change your camera to Camlink 4K. Then, move down to the microphone section and choose your audio capture device, such as the Scarlett, the live track, or whatever you are using to get audio into your computer. Finally, under the output section, you can select your HDMI output from the computer so the audio of your FaceTime guest is embedded in the HDMI output feed. Once those are all set, you are free to FaceTime call your virtual guest. Their video and audio will be supplied to your ATEM using the HDMI cable, and they'll see the return feed using your cam link with their return audio supplied via your audio capture device. One quick note to point out, since there's no easy way to full screen the FaceTime call without seeing the menu options at the bottom of the screen, be sure to position your guest in such a manner that you can crop out that portion of their video feed using the ATEM super source or built-in keyers. So I have my FaceTime guest called in on FaceTime. We've already set this up so that he can receive his return feed and he, he can hear me. And then I can also hear him coming back through the ATEM. We can verify this by having him count to five and you'll see his audio levels move on the multi-view. So Zach, if you could count to five for me. One, two, three, four, five. 
So as you can see on the multi-view, we can hear Zach speaking, and the only way that we make sure that this goes into the live stream is we will have to hit the on button on input number two, which is where his feed is coming in. So if I hit on right now, then we would actually hear him on the live stream. For these purposes, I'm going to keep that off for right now and just talk about how we're going to get his shot framed up. Now, you may notice in this frame, we have a couple of things that we're going to need to crop out. For one, we've got a screenshot button in the very top right corner. We also have a preview of my return feed back to him in the bottom right and some menu options to hang up the call, mute the microphone and the camera in the bottom left. So I'll start by full screening his shot here. And then what we need to do is we need to go into our ATEM software control on the computer and change a couple of settings in order to bring him in as a full feed and make sure we crop everything out. So I'm going to switch over to the ATEM software control. I'm gonna jump out of full screen for just a moment. And there are two ways that we could be bringing Zach into our live stream here. The first could be we could use our super source. So if I head on over to the palette section and super source, I can use my default layout with two boxes and box one I'll set to be my camera, which is the main camera. And then box number two, I'll set to be his camera, which is the FaceTime caller. We've got our two boxes, both me and Zach. But if I bring back Zach full screen here, and ideally you would want to do this on a separate computer so you don't have to switch back and forth between uh, the ATEM software control, you can notice that you still see uh, pillar boxes on either side and you see some of the little items and options on screen. So in order to crop those out, I'm going to jump back over to our software control and for box two, which is the FaceTime caller, I'm gonna scroll down to crop and I'll start by cropping the left. Uh, let's take this to about four maybe three, and we'll crop the right by about three. Now let's switch back to Zach full screen. You can see we've cropped out some of the things on the side. Now we do need to still crop out some of the menu items on the bottom. So I'm gonna jump back over and on the bottom, I'll crop it by a factor of two. And now if you bring Zach back in and we took our super source live on screen, We've got our two boxes and then we could simply go ahead and just adjust and place these wherever we want them to be. So that's one method for bringing in our FaceTime caller using SuperSource. The alternative method is for using your upstream keyer. So I'm going to jump back over to my ATEM software control. I'm going to close out of the super source from the program feed just so I can use my multi-viewer while I'm trying to set this up. And if I go over to my upstream key one, I can simply select my fill source as being the FaceTime caller. And if I were to take that on air for key one, you're going to see key one come up. So if I go back over to Zach, we've got him up on screen, but the same problem persists. We still have these little things that are on the side of the screen, the pillar boxes. Uh, we've got the preview window of myself in the bottom right corner and the hang up call in the bottom left corner. So we're going to need to do some cropping again. So jumping back over to the software control and under the upstream keyer, we have the option to mask. So we're going to use this mask ability and I'm going to check off mask and then we can start to adjust our left, right, top and bottom so that we can start to crop out some of these features. So as you can see, this is now revealing the shot behind it. So if I switch back to Zach full screen, because you're using a keyer, which is laying Zach over top of the other camera shot, we're going to have to tweak this just a little bit to adjust the size of this shot to take up the full screen. So in the software control, we can go ahead and increase the size of this by using a flying key. As you can see, I'm increasing the size. I'm going to start at about 1.7 times the initial size, and then I'll tweak my X and Y axis to put this positioned where I'd like it to be. Now, of course, you're seeing the software control because I'm just switching back and forth and doing this on one single computer. But if I switch back over to Zach full screen on FaceTime, 
voila, you now have Zach full screen on FaceTime and we've cropped out all of those nasty other little elements and I can switch back and forth between Zach speaking and myself by using the upstream here or switching back to camera one, which is my camera angle. There you have it, a FaceTime virtual guest brought into your live stream. It'll take some finesse to make things look good, but you now have a new method of bringing virtual guests into your live stream outside of using Zoom. I can't wait to see what else you come up with. Share your thoughts about this setup in the comments down below.